everyone. Okay, I'll get right to it. Can you hear me? No. No. Closer. Louder. Louder. Soubrette spent an enjoyable few hours with her puppy pal while she waited for human company to return to the house. She watched an old romance classic on the couch with a throw rug and foo-foo on her lap. In fact, by the time she heard the key turn in the front door, she'd almost dozed off. It opened and Fufu leaped to her feet. Oh, I see, said Soubrette, unstretch, uncurling and reaching out for the puppy. All of this puppy dog that I've been seeing was just an act. Fufu was quaking again, and Soubrette held her back. The dog didn't seem to understand that she was up several feet from the ground on the couch. You're not made of puff, you know, said Soubrette, obliging and putting the dog down when she heard two voices coming close. Marcy came in first, followed by Timothy. Hi, Soubrette, said Marcy. Oh, my puppy, I don't want to step on you. I'd squish you. Fufu doesn't seem to understand that she was up on the 10th floor of the couch. Marcy picked up the small, black, wiggling puppy and gave it a kiss. Here, Timothy, she said, handing her over. Take this. Soubrette, I have to tell you something. What's that? I've just seen Anthony. He says her name isn't Fufu at all. Oh, well, I figured something like that might happen. What's her name to be then? He says her name is Artemis, Lady of the Night. Soubrette sat up straight on the couch and felt her eyes reshaping into two round spheres. Wow. That's Anthony for you, put in Timothy, coming over and joining her. What do you mean? That name is perfect, exclaimed Soubrette. It's colossal. It's unpronounceable and not at all conducive to baby talk. I'm surprised you're not more disappointed. Of course you can still use baby talk. Try it then. Okay, fine. Come here, Fufu. I mean, little Artemis, darling. Artemis. Artie? Oh, what a relief. The air just cleared. Men suck all the fun out of everything. Marcy, over by the door, laughed and got down on the rug. Now, Soubrette, where's your fighting spirit? Put that dog down, Timothy. Come here, little lady. Come on, Star Princess. Was tiny little Artemis wondering about her grandma Marcy, huh? Was she hoping grandma would come back with a new princess toy, hmm? I have suddenly remembered an appointment I was late for, said Timothy. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Now, keep Soubrette entertained while I go make us some panini sandwiches. Yes, ma'am. Timothy leaned back on the couch and nudged Artemis's backside with a loafer-covered toe. You've got on fancier shoes today, observed Soubrette. I do work, you know. Did you say you're an investigator? Really? A detective? A private dick? Watch it. Well, I've never known a detective before. I'm not sure I believe you. Believe it, baby, but don't tie me down. <laughs> oh, you're making it up. P.I.s only exist in 80s television shows. <laughs> now who's sucking all the fun out of everything? All right, you got me. I investigate insurance fraud, medical claim research for lawyers, stuff like that. I haven't staked out a house for a divorce case in a long time. Ever, actually. Do you have your own office? My own 8 by 10 sure. But I have a boss. I'm lucky to have the job, really. I wouldn't have been able to except for the fact that I was a cop for two years. You were a cop too? Be still my beating heart. 23 years old, handing out traffic tickets, Answering calls at addresses where the crime had already committed before we got there. Pretty tame, most of it. This is Seattle, not CSI. Why'd you stop being a cop? My career was pretty much trashed after I shot the kid by accident and had to hide in the, from drug lords. Sorry. I, <laughs> oh, I suppose you spent some time in the slam or two. I visit my, visit my informer, Bernie, every Sunday with a chisel cake. <laughs> Are you this annoying at work? 
That's probably why you actually had to stop being a cop. Nobody wanted to be your pal in the black and white. So, Brett, I thought you'd had enough of hearing my entire life story on the day that we met. You mean Saturday? A whole lot of time has passed since then. All right, I'll tell you. I worked as a cop for 26 months, and then there were some budget cutbacks. First to come, first to go, I figured, so I looked around for something else. It turned out that I would have probably kept my job at the department, but I like investigating. I got my license and did other work for insurance firms. I happened to be in the right place at the right time when my current job opened up. Most people my age get stuck with the less fancy titles, but I do spend a lot of time at my desk. Don't get me wrong. I envy you. I love desk jobs. I intend to apply for a few administrative assistant positions. The delicate French secretary perched on the edge of a desk. A uh, panther-like Asian super spy? I still think my visual is sexier. What is sexier than what? Marcy asked suddenly from the doorway. There was a coy grin on her face. Ew, curious second mother figure appearing in the doorway right when the word sex is mentioned, said Anthony. <laughs> That'll teach you. Hmm, said Marcy. She got down on the rug. Come on, Lady Artemis, she cooed. Come and help your Grandma Marcy, but don't get your teeny little paws lost in a big bad kitchen. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, muttered Timothy. <laughs>